If the Miami Dolphins want Mike McDaniel to succeed, they need to overhaul most of the offense this year rather than do it later. Building a roster isn't easy. There is a lot more misses than there are hits. A new head coach coming to a team means the previous coach failed on some level. It means the team didn't win enough games and wasn't good enough. In rare cases, a new head coach can fix a talented team that simply had bad coaching but when the coaching wasn't awful, then the roster is. This is the case with Mike McDaniel. Brian Flores wasn't a bad coach on Sundays his roster was full of holes on offense and that is what McDaniel will inherit. It is also why the Dolphins owner Stephen Ross and general manager, Chris Greer, should give him the go-ahead to blow it up. I am on the side of giving Tua Tungavailoa one year to show he can be Miami franchise quarterback. I understand that there were other reasons why he has not lived up to the hype so far. But keeping Tua for a year doesn't mean you can't build the rest of the offense. The Miami Dolphins have the cap space, can create more, and have no reasons why they can't improve considerably by breaking the offensive unit apart. McDaniel should completely start over with this unit. The running game is the bread and butter of Mike McDaniel and this is where he needs to start his dismantling of the offensive side of the ball. Miami has seven running backs on their roster and four of those are impending free agents. Philip Lindsay, Malcolm Brown, Duke Johnson, Salvan Ahmed. While Lindsay and Johnson showed some good attributes in their limited play last year, Miami doesn't need them to the point that they are must re-sign players. The biggest thing with the running game is that McDaniel has a vision of what he wants the running game to be so he has to decide if any of those players have value for him. If not, let them go. The same can be said for the other three still on the roster. Miles Gaskin, Patrick Laird, Garrett Dokes. Gaskin played well last year at times and has shown he can be relied upon but is he untouchable? Absolutely not. The Dolphins could release all three running back and not re-sign any of their impending free agents and not hurt the Dolphins' offense in any way. Miami doesn't need continuity in the running game because it isn't very good. A new group of runners that could be from a trade, free agency, and the draft is an overhaul that shouldn't be simply discounted and with Mike McDaniel rebuilding the unit, this year is probably a good one to do it in. This unit may not have any choice but to change. The tight end position was once a major weakness of the Dolphins and now, it is a strength but free agency could very well change that. Mike Jasicki and Durham Smythe are both impending free agents and both are arguably the best tight end on the roster, sorry Seathan Carter fans. Under McDaniel, the Dolphins' tight end will be expected to block more but will also be involved in the passing game as receivers. Jasicki is the big unknown. He is the face of the tight end unit, the highlight film star on Sunday nights, but he is going to be very expensive. Smythe is the quiet guy that is more rounded and can block better than Jasicki. Seathan Carter shouldn't be back not at a $2.5 million cap hit. If Miami cuts Carter and Jasicki and Smythe leave in free agency, the Dolphins' tight end unit would consist of Hunter Long and Adam Shaheen. Long is a big question mark and Shaheen is average. The free agent market is not strong this year which means the Dolphins would need to turn to the draft and the draft isn't strong either. If Miami and McDaniel see Long as the future top player at the position, then they are fine but if they are not sure, it would be smart to get Smythe or Jasicki back in the fold. Miami could easily overhaul this offensive unit. Miami doesn't have a choice when it comes to the wide receiver unit. They need to make changes and they probably should make a lot of them. We looked at that earlier with what Wes Welker might have to work with. The wide receiver need to be overhauled and luckily for McDaniel, many of them are impending free agents. The two biggest names that Miami has to figure out from the wide receiver unit are Alan Hearns and Devontae Parker. Hearns hasn't been productive due to injuries for a while and Parker can be replaced. Replacing Parker's production would be easier than replacing what he is supposed to do on the field. He is great at contested catches but can't get separation and his inconsistent production when he is healthy is only matched by inconsistent injury history. McDaniel has the chance to overhaul this unit and build a team that he believes in. Replace Parker and Hearns with free agents in a very deep wide receiver draft that includes quality route runners, physical receivers who can get separation, and speed. Fixing the offensive line may be harder than you think. Of the four offensive units that is not the quarterback, the offensive line may be the hardest for McDaniel to fix and overhaul this year. It is going to take a lot of cap money to invest in free agent linemen and Miami draft position may not be good enough to land a top-line prospect in April's draft. Despite that fact, the Dolphins' biggest priority is to fix the offensive line. Jesse Davis needs to be replaced by what does Miami do outside of that one spot. Liam Eikenberg may be a better interior lineman but should he be replaced after one year on the outside? Playing out of position with a bad offensive line coach? 
Should Michael Dieter who has shown positive development be given up on and replaced at center? What about Austin Jackson who looked better after his move to guard from tackle? Of all the linemen, the most consistent has been Robert Hunt and while we can assume he will get better how do you justify replacing everyone else when they are so young? Miami biggest problem, or at least for Chris Greer is that in the last several drafts they have invested high capital in offensive linemen. Jackson in round 1, Eichenberg and Hunt in round 2, and Dieter in round 3 and all of the have been drafted in the last three seasons. To me, this is where McDaniel faces his biggest challenge, developing the line while adding and subtracting from it. The only spot that is 100% in need of being replaced is Davis at right tackle but he was and isn't the only problem along that line. If Miami believes the problems have been coaching, maybe they get it right but if McDaniel wants a different style of play, a zone blocking scheme is reported, they might have to make some tough choices later this month. So why this year? Overhauling the Miami Dolphins offense this year makes a lot of sense. If Mike McDaniel is the Dolphins head coach of the future and not just this year or the next, the Dolphins need to get him in position to win with his offensive style. If they plan to re-evaluate after the season and take a run at Sean Payton, then Miami problems are not with the players on the roster but with someone else instead. Getting rid of dead weight that don't fit Miami plans shouldn't be a two-year project. Getting the offense fixed this year does several things. It allows for development of new players in the Mike McDaniel system, it gives Miami a good look at Tua Tungavailoa, it allows Miami to focus on the defense next offseason if they need to. The first one is easy to understand. If McDaniel has a vision that doesn't include several players currently on the roster then use the vast amount of cap space to replace them now and start with a new team that fits within those ideals. Spend your time developing players that will be here longer than one season. The second is important as well. There can't be any questions as to whether or not Tua is the guy or not. With an offensive team that still has question marks about their own future at other positions will only serve to add questions to the ability of Tua Tungavailoa to lead the team. Finally, the plan for Miami should be with a look to the future. The Dolphins' defense is very good but Josh Boyer on his own is a question. If the Dolphins' defense regresses, Miami will need to make changes next offseason and by not needing to make offensive changes, the focus and money can be spent where it is needed rather than trying to continue to shape and mold an offense that wasn't fixed this year. Miami has the money and resources to fix their offense in one offseason and not doing it means they don't have a clear vision of what this offense is supposed to be. If Mike McDaniel thinks he can win with these players then he is being nearsighted. He needs to know he can win with them and if he doesn't know that, then he needs to get players that will give him that knowledge.